Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special treat, and I hope you're ready to take some notes because this woman, she's such a powerhouse. She, uh, I mean, she's one of the biggest influencers in our profession. She is one of the most powerful women in our profession. She is one of the co-founders of one of the largest organizations in, uh, in our profession. She's a mom. She's an entrepreneur. She's like everything you want a powerful woman to be and what do you imagine the powerful woman to be. Uh, that's who she is. Uh, please help me welcome Diana Lotson. Thank you so much for having me on. And what a really lovely thing to say. And ditto, my friend, you were as influential, if not more, for all <laughs> the things that you're doing for women in this industry. Well, I mean, it's it's so fun to for me to first of all collaborate and uh, spend some time with uh, with big thinkers, you know, with big visionaries. And I think you definitely one of those people who, you know, who doesn't settle for average, you know, who is not looking at survival, but who is looking at the prosperity at the winning, and doing it with the class doing it with style. And most importantly, doing that with um, the influence and passion and excitement to uplift other people in the process, you know, to help uh, women and men of our profession to have a better opportunity for themselves and their families. You know, um, I can't help it. I live, breathe, eat, sleep, like the passion I have for um, the industry and actually efficacious products that can make a real difference in people's lives, right? I think, I think the beauty about this industry is you can look across and there's some just phenomenal research and education and opportunities and products that can transform people's lives. I, yeah. I, I see it with my own two eyes. It's what makes me happy every day. You know, when I hear people say, I'm down 15 pounds in one month, I was never able to lose weight, or I am waking up and feeling more youthful or I have more energy. Like I have such a deep passion for all of that, especially, I mean, especially for women. If we can help moms, I'm a single mom, if we can help moms not only have better financial opportunities, but feel better and improve their health. Cause you know what? Moms are the ones that so often put themselves second, third, fourth, and fifth. 
Yeah, I think I think women in general, you know, we are like because we we have that motherly instinct, right? So we want to embrace everybody, we want to help everybody. We kind of like, yeah, put more weight on my shoulders. Let me carry all of that. Let me, you know, let me do everything for everybody, but the la- but last person that we think about it ourselves. And that's kind of like where the challenge begins because if you don't take care of your body and your mindset, there is only so far you're going to go. And there's only so much you can carry, you know, before you break down. That is so true. And lots of women break down because they've taken on the burden of making everybody else around them happy or everybody else around them taking care that they're taking care of. Right. And so Mm -hmm. I've a hundred percent made it my life's mission. I mean, to help men too with their health, but to help women from everything from going through changes in their hormone hormones in their body. And no one likes to talk about that, but what is, you know, prior to menopause, six, seven years can be really hard and a lot of changes on women. Nobody talks about. So what can we do to help make that process natural and easier? And what can we do to support women who, you know, um, their bodies are changing and they don't know what to do, or they don't, feel great or they're suffering with allergies or their skin's not looking great, you know, to be able to offer solutions that have no negative side effects. I like to say all the good and none of the bad. I, I mean, I love that part. I I need all of that. Everything you just described, I need all of that. (laughs) (laughs) It's, It's, but there's so many topics that people never talk about. Right. Right. Don't talk about the ways in which women's bodies change and the support we need as women for our bodies based in the category of age we're in. You know, as we change and develop and our hormones change. And so often we're in a society where we go to a doctor and they allopathic doctors have their place. I have many friends, um, people on our scientific advisory board, allopathic doctors, Western doctors. But so often it's like putting a bandaid over the problem without getting to the root of it and offering solutions that don't have side effects. That's what we want to do. And we want to be like, I want to help women be proactive in their life. Right. How can you be proactive so that you're that, you know, rocking grandma one day or that, you know, that 70 year old who's worked really hard and now is traveling the world looking fabulous. Right. I want that for women, but that means taking a look at themselves and saying, hey, what's not right here? And asking hard questions, because you know what's interesting? We think it's normal to break down. We think it's normal to deteriorate. We think it's normal to gain weight. We think it's normal to have mood shifts like crazy because of hormones. We think it's normal to be on pharmaceutical drugs, normal to start aging super young. We think all that stuff is normal and it is normal but it's not natural. Mm. And it's a reflection so often of the way we're living our lifestyles. Yeah. Well, here, let's talk about the lifestyle because you are, you are a mom, you are a top executive in the company, you traveling right now, maybe not as much because of the pandemic, but in general, you're traveling the world uh, almost like half a year you're out and uh, you raising your child. And I mean, it's like, how, how do you manage all of that? I mean, it's like, describe to me one day or typical day in your life and kind of like how you deal with all of that. Well, first of all, a lot of people like to talk about the word balance. And I hate to break it to you, but anybody who is pushing hard in their career, the word balance, um, doesn't exist. For me, what it looks like is I might have had three days of hardcore work where my kids spend for themselves or DoorDash was their cook. (laughs) And then I had three days where I did all that for them. And I was the great mom. So for me, it was in, you know, I always think I'm a great mom, but there, that, that there's an ebb and a flow in the energy. And then when I'm with my kids, because you're right, I traveled a lot, then I'm present with them and I show up and I know their friends 
and I know their friend's parents. So that even when I'm not around, I'm still a part of what's going on, you know? And so I think if you try to think that you're going to perfectly balance it all, you're going to drive yourself crazy. And I don't even believe in that notion. The same thing, I don't even believe in the notion of everything in moderation. I think that's a super lazy, awful thing to say. But as far as being a mom and being being an executive and then traveling and all the employees, I also do another thing my whole life is I brought my kids into my work. Mm. I had to go to Australia. I said, hey, you two want to come? (laughs) <laughs> and then I do my work and I have expectations that they're professional when I'm at events or at their work. And they are, they've been well trained in that. Right. And they get to know representatives in our company and our representatives know them and they allow me to do what I need to do. And then after four days of work in Australia, I take them around the country, just me and them for five days. And then off we go. So I also bring them into my work. Even when I'm doing Zooms with employees or anyone else, I'll say, oh, would you like to meet my family? And I call my kids over because I want them to feel like there isn't, there isn't two me's. There isn't the mom and the executive. There's just right. me. And, and with that means I got to bring them into my work. I got to let them know what I'm working on. I have to have them let them try new samples of things that are coming in. I have to bring them in and, you know, try ideas out on the kids and and have them feel like they're a part. And and I think that has helped me when time is crunched and I'm working really hard, you know. I think you you said something so brilliantly important is because I, I keep hearing the word balance every time. And every time I hear it, just like, oh, it makes me cringe, you know, because like, I feel like if you have uh, big goals, big dreams, uh, I mean, it's like your life is not going to be balanced. I mean, it's like if you want to live an average life, then yeah, you can probably find balance. But I think most importantly, everybody need to come up with their own distinction because what might be balanced for you and me might be insanity and a nightmare for somebody else. But for us, it works. It works for us. So I, I would encourage every single person watching us to really think about us, like what is the balance for you? Not what you think it should be, not what the society puts on you, not what you know people are pressuring you to be part of or think of. Just decide what is it for you, you know. Uh, because for me, I view the life in seasons. You know, for me, I don't kind of like I don't try to fit my day into the 24-hour cycle. I fit my life in seasons. Right now, I'm in a crazy busy season because I'm uh, promoting the women's event. We just launched our virtual studio uh, less than a month ago. So I'm in a big PR push there. So right now, my life looks like insanity because I'm doing interviews back to back and calls and Zooms and promotions and everything you can possibly imagine. But guess what? Once that season is over, I'm going to take a little time off. I'm going to spend some time with my kids. I'm going to take them on different trips. I'm going to take them. And like you said, I always want them to be part of the equation and part of the conversation and part of the journey because uh, I, I have to have some sit down conversations with them and explain, this is the reason why I do what I do, you know, and because they've been growing up in this environment, I don't have to have those conversations anymore because our youngest is uh, 15 years old, but he already knows like, oh, okay, mom, are you done with the Zooms? Are you done with this? Are you done with that? And then I spend some time, a quality time with him because the rest of them are already all grown ups and all over the place. But I think the biggest mistake that we make is, first of all, trying to fit in the, uh, our day into the 24-hour cycle or our balance or whatever the lifestyle you're trying to create into the 24-hour cycle. And I think the second mistake we mom make is um, we think that kids need all of our time. No, they don't. I mean, it's like, I don't know what age your kids, if they're newborn, of course, and you're breastfeeding, of course, you need to spend a lot of time with them. 
But if they're a little bit older and they can take care of themselves, I just see sometimes because I, I, I'm, I'm being honest, you know, just like you, sometimes my kids are eating through the Uber Eats and DoorDash and all that stuff. I just sitting the, seeing the statement in my email, it's like, oh, DoorDash just charged you or Uber Eats just charged your credit card. I was like, oh, my son is fed <laughs> you know? and I can go back to work. But there are going to be days when, you know, him and I will be cooking breakfast together or him and I are going to be doing stuff that he likes to do. So I, I want to have that quality time. But fooling ourselves that they want to spend all of their time 24 hours with us, I think it's kind of crazy because they don't. They have their world. They have their dreams and goals and things that they want to do. And we are not always part of it. <laughs> and you know, on that, very well said. And you know, on that is... When you work really hard and then you end up achieving success because of different seasons in your life, I love the way you said that, that allows you to do things um, like I don't clean my own house. Sorry, I just don't. I work my rear end off. So I decide to take my money. You can say butt. You can say your butt off. That's okay. (laughs) And I spend my money to hire someone to come in to do that so that I don't spend my free time cleaning my house when I could be with my kids. Right. And when I work really hard and um, I don't want to just spend the whole time in the kitchen making dinner, I'll spend my money to order food and then just be able to sit with them and watch a movie or do something else, right? And so I think we can also leverage our, um, our money to work for us so we can avoid some of those tasks. And I love to garden. I love those things. But I don't want to spend all my time doing that if I'm in a busy work season. Right. I want to hire someone else to do it and do it as I enjoy it, but make sure then my priorities go somewhere else. And right. uh, so I think we can leverage our money that way, too. I, yeah, I think, I think the biggest uh, stereotype uh, that at least we women have in our heads is like, we have to have, and we have to manage all of it. We have to do all of it. We have to be everything to everybody. And that's not necessarily the case. You know, we all have different strengths, talents, and uh, things that only we can do. So, I mean, like you said, uh, hiring some help, outsourcing some help, finding people who can do best what they do best and let them do that work so you can do best what only you can do. You know, because there are certain things that sometimes talking your kids to bed, only you can do. But sometimes, you know, uh, you might need help if you're traveling or whatever. But as long as that brings you joy, you know, as crazy as it sounds, I, I have support system, you know, for a lot of different things in my life. I do not do grocery shopping, but once in a while, I enjoy it. So once in a while, for me, I'm going into my Zen mode and just kind of like walking with the grocery cart <laughs> and I was like in the grocery store and picking my fruits and vegetables because I like that, but it does not define me. It does not limit, uh, it limits what I should be doing in my job and in my journey of uh, you know, empowering women, for example, or building the business, just because I find my identity that I need to be doing grocery shopping all day, every day, and that's my responsibility. So just realizing, you know, who can help you to live your life at the best so you can be your best and let everything go, you know, surround yourself with professionals and learn how to delegate. I think it's one of the important business lessons I had to learn sometimes hard way. Yeah, you know, on that note too, I actually think, is you start to delegate or you start to get help, especially for entrepreneurs. I'm assuming most women watching this are entrepreneurs. Um, When I did that in my life, I actually started making more money. I had to risk spending the money to do that, but it allowed me to free up my mind space and my physical time. And it allowed me to be more successful because of it, you know? And so I think sometimes those those moves are scary to spend that money if you're a new entrepreneur and you don't have a lot of money, but you also have to know that your time and thought space is worth something as well. And so maybe it's worth the risk to try a few of those new things or getting support you haven't had before. 
You know, Eric is teaching one of the concepts, uh, $500 an hour mentality, which means that, you know, he he tells the story when he was a young man and he was uh, asking one of his mentors, you know, it's like, how do you manage a lot of things in your life? Because you are such, he was, a, that guy was a billionaire, managed a lot of different companies. And he's like, how, how do you manage all of those things? And he said a brilliant idea. First of all, Eric, what are your goals, right? At that time, Eric wanted to make a million dollars a month. Uh, a year. And he said, oh, it works out to about $500 an hour uh, in order to get to a million dollar uh, annual income. So he said, are there any $500 an hour activities that only you can do that will be paying you $500 an hour? And Eric said, yes, inside of our profession, if you are in front of the prospect, it's not going to pay you $500 immediately, but over time, that, that money going to be coming in from your recruitment and leading that person and helping them become independent and growing organization. Over time, you're going to get paid $500 an hour. And it's like, okay, great. But on the other side, do you mow the lawn? Or do you do grocery shopping? Or do you fill your car with the gas? Or do you do all of those little, you know, things? And he said, yeah, what? Well, I mean, first of all, how much does it cost you to hire somebody to take care of your garden, to take care of your lawn, to fill the gas uh, tank in your car, to do all of those different things? Well, you probably can hire somebody for $15, $20 an hour to take care of all those different tasks. So now you think about this math. You are not wasting $20. You are losing $480 by doing this task. Instead of being in front of the prospect, instead of pouring into your business, instead of being more productive in uh, in things that only you can do, you are just paid $500 to whoever to fill up your car or do your loan or do your laundry or do your cooking and do your whatever. Now we're talking about wasting money. So I think that that was a huge shift for him. And when I think and apply that to my life, I think it's so true and so powerful because we often do not realize we're trying to hold on to that little amount of money that we have. And because of we're holding on to it, we are missing on such a big opportunity. Like you said, once you decided to invest in your life, in your um, in everything that's surrounded with you, but at the same time, it freed up time to do what you do best, what nobody else can do, your life started progressing and you became more and more successful. So just realize and find out because all of you watching here, I'm sure if you are in front of your prospect doing the follow-up or training your team and helping them become successful, you will get paid. And kind of like, I'm not trying to make any display uh, the claims here, but over time, you will make a lot more money than the time that you're spending on uh, taking care of your garden. And let's be clear, because I really want to make this point too, and all very well said. I'm not suggesting that you have someone else buy all your groceries so you can sit back and watch a movie. Entrepreneurship, business ownership, in the beginning is, um, like you said, the season is hardcore. It's all in. Because if you're not all in, if you've been sold something else by someone else, they're not being truthful. Because I've never known an entrepreneur, a business owner that started off and turned the light switch on and everything run perfect, right? The season is the grind and you're in it, right? And, um, and then when things start going well and flow, you can breathe a little. And then things go on autopilot and you have the life you're really looking for. And, and those seasons are real. And so when we talk about paying somebody to do your garden or something else, it's not so that you can play or do life as if you've already hurt, hit the level three of right. your business, you know? And I've seen that happen all the time too. People start making a little bit and then go above and beyond their means, you know, and stop the grind. And then... Uh, with that, don't understand why they're not seeing the success they need. So there's, there needs to be some awareness in that, that in the beginning of any in entrepreneurial journey, you're all in. 
You, you, yeah, you're absolutely right. You have to replace that hour that somebody going to be taking care of something for you. That exact hour, you cannot be laying on the couch. That exact hour, you need to be working your business. That exact hour, you need to be pouring back into your team. Okay. That's that's the only way how it's going to work. You know, you touch on something really, really important and something that I actually never thought about it, but it's so brilliant. Uh, you said that you cannot be an entrepreneur part time. This is like, whoa, it just gives me chills because that is so true. I mean, it's like inside of network marketing, we are so lucky. We are so lucky because this profession is so forgiving. You can do it part time, a little here, a little there and still make money. You know, you can be absolutely oblivious to the skills and the mindset that it takes and you can still make money. You cannot achieve and reach higher level of success if you do not grow, if you do not become a professional inside of network marketing, if you do not develop the skills and the mindset necessary. But you can still make 500 bucks or 1000 bucks a month for just being around and doing a little bit of something. I do not know a single entrepreneur who can be a part time entrepreneur. I mean, it's like if you open a bakery, you cannot open a bakery part time. You're going to be there full time, 24 seven as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you are there to open the doors. You are there to close the doors. You are there to take the risks. You are there to put all the money. You are there to swipe the floor if it's necessary. You are there to do everything. And you're going to still have a very fairly minimal chance to succeed because, you know, 90% of businesses, especially the startups, they fail for the first year. So you're going to be pouring your blood, sweat and tears and money into that. And that's normal. That's okay. But when people come to network marketing, I think that one of kind of like the biggest things for me right now is I, I, I feel like it would be actually really nice if We all raised, like you as a company owner, if you would raise the price to join your company, because then maybe people will take it seriously because it's so cheap, because they get to get all the products and you guys have refund policies and all that stuff. They do not value the opportunity that they have in front of them. They do not understand the gift that network marketing gives to all these people because the price of entry is so low. First time somebody says, boo, they're out of here and they start blaming the profession. They will never take responsibility and they'll just say network marketing doesn't work. Not that they didn't work. They will never admit that, but they will just bash the profession. It, it's just like so frustrating for me to see because people do not understand. Network marketing is probably, in my opinion, the most brilliant um, entrepreneurial opportunity. When you as a company, you take on the all heavy lifting and all they need to do is to bring their excitement, their passion, uh, their sweat equity in order to be successful. But I think because we kind of made it fairly easy on all the people, they just don't see it and don't value it. Do you notice that? Oh, I think that goes across the board. Do you know how many overweight people I've said, I'm going to gift you our weight loss program. And because I gifted to them, they don't do it. Like they don't have the skin in the game. So absolutely. When you open a brick and mortar shop, you put a lot of money, six figures over six figures into that. Therefore you're in it. Right. And, and there's, there are people in our profession that make false promises. And then people come in, they think, oh, I just have to tell two people and I'm going to be a millionaire. It's easy. Well, you know, it's an, it's, it's an entrepreneurial journey. I mean, it's funny because before I became an owner of a network marketing company, I, um, I thought network marketing companies were kind of scamish. I had this belief. I, and, um, and I thought to myself, I'll just make the product so great that if I become an owner and one, and we, we partner this way, that I can sleep at night because I know if somebody spends a dollar with us, they'll get all that back in value. I can, I can, I can live with that. And, but I wasn't a big fan of the model until I then really understood the model. And then the moment I understood the model, I was like, oh my gosh, I never looked at it this way. Network marketing isn't a hobby. It isn't a fill your garage with products. You're deciding you're going to be an entrepreneur. So no wonder there's so many people that fail because they haven't made that decision yet. And no wonder why the ones who do make the decision can make huge six-figure incomes, right? 
and, and change their lives because they treat it like their entrepreneurial dream, you know, and they run with it. And, and prior to becoming an owner, I was a teacher at the university and then I was a professional speaker, a paid professional speaker. And so to be a female professional speaker and make multiple six figures, especially at my time when I started that like 25 years ago, um, was unheard of. It was a man's world, right? And men were the one that were getting paid 10, 15, $20,000 to stand on the stage. And so people had told me, don't do it. Even a, a man who's like the best man, you know, at my wedding was like, um, no one will buy you. No one will pay your topic. Don't do it. And I was like, just watch me. You know, year one, I made no money. Year two, totally in credit card debt. Year three, six months in, I um, hit my break. And then I was off to the races, right? I was making it. And, um, and, and then it just grew and grew and grew and got better and better and better. But I always ask myself, like, there's so many people that quit before they realize their dreams, right before they go to realize their dreams. And so many people though don't treat it like a legitimate real thing. And being an entrepreneur is what we were talking about earlier. You're going to have seasons in your life. And if you want to get to the end season where people look at you and say, you're so lucky, I can't stand that comment. People say to me all the time, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. I'm like, lucky? I work my butt off. I am not lucky, <laughs> right? I took risks. I had sleepless nights. I, 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 I am not lucky. Yeah, 30 years for that overnight success, right? 30 years oh of the hard God, work for that right? overnight success. <laughs> totally. And so I just think, you know, people that come into this industry and teach it, treat it like an entrepreneurial journey. I, I've seen so many amazing people who had no experience, but treated it like that and were so successful. Yeah, I mean, it's, and let's kind of like with all of that, let's pivot to, uh, to the events because, you know, uh, I know you guys are supporting um, and I'm really grateful for the support as a company you guys give us uh, with all the events that we do and uh, different products and coaching that Eric and I do. But uh, I know that, uh, you know, women empowerment is near and dear to your heart. Um, and with this upcoming event, uh, I was hoping that we're going to have the CEO panel, but unfortunately with everybody's schedules and everything, we couldn't make it happen. So I'm trying to bring and highlight top CEO CEOs of this profession through this interview. Uh, but what would you give the advice to women, first of all, who are thinking, should they uh, come to the event? And I mean, it's like, I don't even know why would they not, because it's absolutely free. But second of all, because it's free, I want to make sure that they treat it seriously, because whatever we have for free, we don't necessarily pay attention. So uh, what would you tell to all the women who are thinking to attend the event or What's the, what's the power of the events in general? One comment, one connection, one spark of an idea could be worth millions. You know, I, whenever you're around people, big thinkers, people who have already done it, people who have gone through the hardships, you can learn from them, right? There's a lot to learn. And so often at these events, one of the beauties is not just being inspired, but hearing the things that other people went through. Because sometimes when people look at you or me, they think, wow, their life is easy. <laughs> and they don't realize what the journey looked like. And so when, we, when we're around other women who are either in the journey, been through the journey, at the other end of the journey, right? Um, um, we can remember that we're not alone in this. And community, I think, is everything. And, and no matter where we look, maybe you want a weight loss community. I think it could be inspirational. Maybe you want a community because you have cancer and you need support. You know, um, you come to an event like this because you've decided you wanted to be a female entrepreneur in this field and you didn't want to put the three, four hundred thousand dollars down to open a brick and mortar store. You wanted to, you know, have a less upfront risk in money. Well, that's what you come to things for, to be around the community of people who are already done it and realize you can look at them and say, there's nothing special about me. 
You know, there is nothing special about me. Um, I just happen to maybe do things different day to day. That's all. And so if you can learn those things, you do lose, learn those things at events. Um, it can change your, you know, financial trajectory. Uh, well, thank you so much. And I, I really appreciate it because, uh, you know, you, uh, I know how busy you are and uh, spending this time with me today. And guys, put in the comments below because I, Anna, put so many different uh, golden nuggets in this uh, conversation. So uh, put like, what was the aha from what you heard? And uh, make sure that you join us for the women's event. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. They're going to be so many defining moments. They're going to be so many great ideas. They're going to be shared so so many different strategies who can help you to step into your true potential and help you to, you know, finally decide to play bigger and realize that uh, all of us, we're still playing small. There is a bigger world. There is more impact to be made. And we are capable of creating that change because when women come together, a lot of powerful and exciting things are happening. So, Dan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for being uh, such a big kind of light, such a powerful woman leading the charts of this profession. Um, thank you so much for all the hard work you do and inspiring women across the globe with uh, who you are and the work you put on and, uh, you know, just, uh, just being an amazing woman. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marina. It was so fun. So fun to be here. Bye, guys.